and welcome to another episode of the Rorschach Test Podcast. I am your host, Terrell James. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Samreen Mangello. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yes. That Thank is you good. for having me. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Samreen is a life coach as well as a physical therapist. Purpose, but uh, we're going to focus more so today on uh, the life coach aspect. Um, but uh, before we get into putting these pictures up, oh, by the way, if it's your first time watching the show, uh, what I do here is I put up a series of Rorschach or inkblot tests and I ask my guests what they see. So based off what they see, I connect it to who they are as a person and what they do for a living and to their passions. So um, so we're going to focus today on Samreen and, um, and her role as a life coach. Um, life and success coach. Um, yeah. So, well, first, before we get into the pictures, though, I just want to ask you, so what made you decide to get into it? Yes. So that's a really good question. I have been practicing physical therapy for um, 11 years now, and that led me to branch off and start my life coaching or success coaching business because of what I saw from working with my patients. So it really evolved from the physical therapy profession that I currently still am in part time, but it inspired me to work with people um, at a greater capacity, not just the physical healing, but the, the mental and physical because they were so connected, the mind and body. I found that when I worked with patients, when they had that strong mindset, you know, the positive mindset, their outcomes were better. When they were able to cultivate the healthy lifestyle, their outcomes were better. So mm -hmm. I was just struck by the patterns and I was inspired from that to then work with people at that other level of improving their mind and body health. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. And you said you've been doing it for 11 years? The physical therapy for 11 years, yes. Okay, how about life coaching? How long have you been doing that? Four years. Four years, okay, okay. That sounds good. Okay, so the rest of the information that I'm gonna try to pull out of you, I wanna use the pictures to do that, okay? So we're going to start with this first picture. So what did you say that you saw here? So when I look at that, to me, it seems like it's an angel, um, mm -hmm. you know, with her hands up in the air that I looked at it quite a few times and it just seems like, I don't see anything else but that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's something positive. Right, right. Okay. I, um, I see an angel as well. Um, do you? Okay. Yeah. Yes, I do. You know, with these pictures, oftentimes, you know, I see what I see. And then when somebody else says what they see, I'm able to see that too. So. Oh, I see. It's just, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just the way uh, the mind works, and then there's also the power of influence. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it. Um, so I can, but I can definitely see an angel. As a matter of fact, I don't even remember what I said I saw the first time I saw this. All I huh. see now is an angel. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But, okay. But okay, so we're gonna deal with the angel now. So, um, yeah. do you believe in? earthly angels do you believe that there are angels that are actually here on earth with us and if so do you believe that they protect us wow uh you know i have to say yes i i believe in angels so much and that they are always protecting me guiding me um especially when i you know ask for the guidance so mm -hmm. Yes, I definitely believe in angels. And growing up, I was always told that we do have angels, but that was just a, you know, a knowledge from someone telling me. But as I had my experiences and continue to, I have the proof. I know that they, I just, I haven't seen one, but I, I know that I'm, when I ask for guidance, I get it. And I feel, mm -hmm. I feel it's like almost like an inner knowing 
that they are around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there the, the feeling that you have, is it more of a belief or is there sometimes an actual physical feeling that you feel that know that, that lets you know that there is some sort of protection around you? Well, the belief comes from the feeling that I have deep inside. Um, Cause I am a very mental in my head person in general. So I'm always questioning, always have question in my life. And I, um, you know, I feel better when it's more of a knowing and mm -hmm. what I, I feel, I feel it. I, and I feel it the the presence of angels more so because i like i said when i ask for the guidance i get it mm -hmm. i get it i don't it's because you know i'm i'm doing it with my pure heart and i have good intentions and i ask you know they say ask and you shall receive so i ask and i can't tell you how many times how many times in my life i get what i want not right away necessarily but, you know, to me, that's like a miracle. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I'm amazed and I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. now still, still dealing with the angels. So as a life coach, yes. you are, you teach people to focus on healing rather than on pain. So when a loved one dies, it's natural to just mourn their death. But that person has also been promoted to angel and that actual, that promotion is actually an honor. And when you are able to change the focus and instead of focusing on the death and you're able to focus more so on the promotion to angel, there's healing in that. So my question to you is when dealing with the death of a loved one, how easy has it been for you to not focus so much on the death, but instead focus on the angel? Wow. Wow. That's a really powerful question. So I, I fortunately haven't had anyone recently pass mm -hmm. away. Okay. However, I have my father who was diagnosed with, um, but he has to have open heart surgery. He's 85 and he has three blockages, 90% in major arteries. And we just recently learned about this in the last few months. The doctors are mm -hmm. saying that he is high risk if he does not have open heart. So, you know, as much as I don't want to accept the reality, the reality is he may not have very long to live. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully he does. Miracles happen, um, you know, yes. unless he chooses to have the surgery. But even then it's risky at 85. Mm -hmm. So when you ask that question, this comes to mind. I, you know, have lost people in my life, but thankfully my parents are still around and um, I am an only child. I've okay. lost some great people that I, um, you know, really looked up to relatives uh, also, but, um, and pets. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know too much about the afterlife other than, I mean, these, this is, these are powerful questions. I, what I know, again, I'm a very mental, I love, like almost like scientific, you know, like I have, I like to see proof. I like to think about things when it comes to the afterlife and angels and death. I wish I knew more, you know, mental, but in my <laughs> heart, what I know Right. In my heart, what I know and feel is that we are always protected. I guess what I'd like mm -hmm. to know is in what form that will be. And yeah, that's it. That's, that's what I'd like to know is what form. So I have a lot of questions still, but you know, I have enough faith to know that we are going to be okay. We came from somewhere. We're going somewhere. Right. We're not going right. to be gone <laughs> completely. Right. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's move on to another picture now. Okay. So what did you say you saw here? Oh goodness. This was actually quite confusing to me um, because <laughs> it looked like a bug. <laughs> I looked like a okay. bug with the hands on the hips, you know, mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know. It, to me, it just looks like a, like a, not a ladybug, but some kind of bug. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. right. I can't really okay. pinpoint it. Okay. So now bugs, uh, you know, a lot of people, especially children are afraid of bugs. Okay. So, yeah. I, want to talk, so I want to talk about fear. I want to talk oh, about the fears. Gosh. So Ooh. what what kind of fears did you have when you were growing up? <laughs> um boy, you're diving deep. Let's see. So <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't ever have a specific fear of like heights or bugs. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't like bugs, you know, mm -hmm. naturally spiders and I I actually grew up in Miami, so there was a lot of, you know, lizards and you know, sometimes they'd come inside the house and oh gosh, you know, but, um, yeah, it is. So, you know, those, I, I didn't like reptiles and, uh, no, no particular fear, but I would say it was more generalized, you know, mm. just kind of worry. You know, I did have that growing up. Really? What kind of Over, things you about? Overthinking just, I don't know. It just was, you know, and I, I, over the years, I have learned to practice meditation. So it really, really has helped me profoundly to, to just calm my mind. But yeah, I just, I don't know. It was not anything in particular. It was just a general sense of worry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what, so, okay. I'll ask some specific questions then. Okay. Were you ever yes. scared of, <laughs> were you ever scared of the dark? Yes. Yes, of course. Okay. I, I, I was. Yeah. Okay. So with your, your fear of the dark, what exactly was it about the dark that you were scared of? I mean, I, so I'm afraid of scary movies. Um, okay. <laughs> and so I think, you know, as a kid, you're like, Oh, you know, monsters under the bed or in the mm -hmm. closet, things like that. Um, you know, the unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The unknown. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and then you, you just brought up monsters. So, um, I remember when I was younger, I never believed in monsters. I never thought that monsters were real. Um, and then, well, as a kid, I didn't believe that monsters were real. I became an adult and realized that monsters are real. They just are human. When mm. you hear yeah. me say yeah. that, okay, so and you agree with that? A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So how do you yeah. adjust living in a world full of monsters? Whoa. <laughs> okay. So I like that question. Um, wow. Where to begin? So, okay. I might go deep here, but okay. so, so I've had situations in my life where I would look at someone and think, how in the world can a human being be like this? You know, I mean, you see it on the news. You're like, what? How could somebody treat somebody like this? I've had the personal experiences for sure. Um, monsters, you can call them monsters. Now, when I was less evolved, when I was younger and I was, I would look at these people and, and almost, you know, judge and say, oh, they're, like this. And now as I have evolved and continue to evolve, I look at people like this and, and I'm so grateful I'm at this point in my life, regardless of to the, you know, there's horrible, right? Degrees of what people do, monsters. Mm -hmm. When I look at someone who is like that, my natural reflex and tendency is to be like, to clench up and be like, wow, how can they be like this? But then instead, what I have come to understand is that a person like that, I mean, when they were born, they were pure, I feel, my belief. They got tainted, they got hurt, you know, their inner child. But ultimately, I try to look at those people as extremely hurt individuals filled with trauma. They have pain. They may not realize it. Now, I don't know if there's a, you know, past life. I don't know for sure. But if there is, I mean, maybe it comes from a past life. Who knows? But they are dealing with trauma. 
And okay. what I have chosen, and again, like I said, it's happened to me personally too. So if I, instead of judging, what has helped me profoundly is to look at that individual and to look at them on a deep level, their inner child, and to forgive. To mm -hmm. forgive. Because, because when I look at someone with the eyes of love, no matter how much of a monster they are, they have that piece of love in them. For me, my judgment of them dissolves when I look at them that way. I, I know that's a deep answer, but it's, it's something that I, um, yeah, I've been really working on forgiving those that I perceive as being, you know, quote unquote, the monsters. Mm -hmm. I feel like it really shifts the energy within me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I get it. I get it. So, okay. So still dealing with the bug that you saw the bug. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in metaphysics, the metaphysical explanation for bugs is change and transformation. Right. So uh, now we just talked about how people have a fear of bugs, right? But as right. a success coach, as a a success coach, you help people to change their focus. Like I said earlier, you know, you help people to change the way that they look at things. So, you know, going back to the example that I used earlier, instead of getting people to, you know, instead of having people focus on the pain, you instead get them to focus on the healing. But if we're talking about bugs here and the metaphysical explanation is change and transformation, then what you would do is instead of having them focus on the fear, you would have them focus on the change and transformation. More specifically, you get them to not focus on being the caterpillar, but rather being the butterfly. So, oh, which is, yes. you know, in the butterfly. So, the butterfly, of course, is that change and that transformation. So, when you were growing up, were you more focused on being the caterpillar or were you focused on being the butterfly? Hmm. So, when I was growing up, my focus was n unfortunately more on you know not the the bug i was focused on mm -hmm. the cup is half full not i mean half empty not half full right, right? so i mm -hmm. my focus was a limiting mindset growing up okay. yeah yeah for sure okay so what was it that caused you to start focus, start focusing on being the butterfly? Oh, okay. So, so, um, so yeah, so tell, tell, tell me about the, about that transformation. Transformation. Um, well, it's been a long mm -hmm. process, long process. So mm -hmm. when I was a teenager, I, I, you know, I recognized that within me, I had this drive to find happiness and I was going to do whatever it took. I would read the personal development books. I had the best mentors. I, you know, I prayed about it and I, I feel like my, my journey so far has been paved with incredible people, mentors, and even I have tools uh, from my own life experiences. And like I said, the books that I've read and my own inner work. I did a lot of inner healing, inner work. And what um, what it did for me is it helped me create my ideal life. And that's why I'm in this place now where I feel like I can give back with the experiences that I have, the knowledge that I have. I mean, I am not perfect. I'm still a works in progress, but I feel that it's a calling for me to, to help other people because there's a lot of people suffering, mm -hmm. a lot of people in pain who don't show it, you know, walking around, you don't see it on the surface. They'll smile deep inside. They carry these wounds um, and they carry these limiting mindsets because, you know, you have a limiting mindset. It affects your daily choices and that affects your lifestyle. It, if you don't address the limiting mindset, the limiting beliefs, the limiting thoughts, it will lead to disease. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the bottom line. 
Your your mm-hmm. thoughts and your beliefs yeah. create your life, period. Right, right. Um, do you believe that the things that you went through growing up is what makes it easier for you to connect to people who are dealing with trauma now? 100%, 100%, yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, my trauma might be different than another person's mm-hmm. trauma, but I get it. Mm-hmm. I understand what pain is. Um, I understand mm-hmm. what it's like to go through the healing process and and come out to the other side. And I want to see right. more people come out to the other side and mm-hmm. feel that joy. Right, right, yeah, because it's, it's more so of an energy thing. So it, you may not necessarily have the same trauma as somebody else, so right. it's not the act Action for action, it's the energy for energy, and the energy is the trauma. So, because you can relate to having trauma, you can relate to somebody else who has had trauma as well. So, yeah, and it definitely makes it easier to connect to people. It makes it easier for those people to confide in you and to listen and to receive things mm. from you. So, yes. um, yeah, yeah, that definitely. Um, it's. I, I'm gonna tell you something. I um. I believe that the best people to help people are the people who have had an incredible amount of trauma and have figured it out, who figured out how to change their focus, change the way that they're looking at things. And of course you fall in that category. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I mean, for me, it wasn't, I'm fortunate. I didn't have the, you know, physical trauma or anything like that. I mean, for me, emotionally, it was hard when my parents divorced when I was a real young kid because I was super attached to both of them. And I was, I think, six or seven years old. So, you know, for me, that was a start. And then the rest Mm -hmm. was, I would say, self-imposed, my limiting mindset. You know, I had things, but I feel like I attracted that, you know, I I believe in energy and law of attraction. So, you know, if I then develop a limiting mindset, which is what happened, I continued to attract those limiting, you know, the, the things that led from the limiting mindset to, you know, the, the limiting outcome, the, the results I saw were not what I wanted with mm-hmm. all facets of my life. Um, but I I have the gift of persistence, determination, because that's my, I was born with that. If I want something, I don't stop. I work hard for it, you know, and I do whatever it takes to understand things. So I was always that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so now I wanna move on to the third picture that I sent you. Third picture, okay. Yeah. Okay, so what did you say you saw here? Oh gosh, so here's another one where I was really, I, I was like, what is this? So <laughs> I saw Batman at the top, you know, like Bat, and then <laughs> oh, <I see> and <laughs> two, <laughs> two people talking to each other, you know, nose to nose, like, that's mm-hmm. all I could get from it. I, I couldn't see anything else. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. So, what well, no, Nothing that's... distinct, yes. Okay. That Actually, I'm going to tell you what, what I just saw when I put it up. Then I'm going to see if you see the same thing. I see two seahorses looking at each other. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely yeah. see that. Mm-hmm. Seahorses. Okay. <laughs> um, but okay, but back, back to what you said you saw. So two <laughs> people look, looking at each other or having a conversation. So um, tell me this. What is the hardest conversation that you've ever had to have with somebody face to face? Hardest conversation? Gosh, there have been many. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, but, I, but what I find to be interesting about that is I'm very good at communication. I pride myself on that. Um, You know, when it comes to even hard communications, because I don't believe in sweeping things under the rug. Um, And, and I am good because I, I speak from the heart. So my intentions are always pure. So when I 
And I, I attribute it to that. I don't know. But I, I have good intentions. And when there's an issue, my whole life I've been like this. I am able to communicate with someone and almost every single time it helps the relationship. Mm -hmm. So what about the hard conversations? The hard conversations is what I'm talking about. It's well, it's those hard conversations that mm -hmm. you know you don't want to talk about, but in my gut, I guess it's a gut sense also, I know that there's a reason for this conversation and it's going to help in some way. It it, it will so, help improve the relationship. So how do you approach that? I, I had a conversation with a friend one time. And she was telling me about an issue she was having with her husband. And she said, I'm afraid to talk to him about this. I'm afraid to bring this to him. And um, she said, because this is going to be a very hard conversation. It's going to really bother him. And I said, yeah, with, you know, hard conversations are like surgery. You have to cut sometimes mm -hmm. to get to the root of the problem. But once you get in there, once you make that cut, it's time to get in there and fix the problem and then you can repair the cut. So I, I tried to, so I explained her, I said, so you have to, you know, look at this as if it's surgery, you have to make sure that you use the right knife. Don't use the knife. That's going to hurt the most. You find no. the knife that's going to cause the least amount of pain. It's going to cause pain, but you have to cause, you know, have to pick the knife. And what I was saying is you have to, on the easiest uh, a way to deliver this to him and then once you know, because you you don't want to make a person defensive no um no. and you want them to be able to open up and you want them to be open to fixing it so when you are choosing that knife to to talk to somebody um how how difficult is that for you when facing a hard conversation to choose the right knife so that you can create the least amount of pain possible I mean, look, it's never, it's never comfortable. It's certainly getting out of your comfort zone because who wants to have that uncomfortable conversation? But it's, um, mm -hmm. again, it's, I, I try to approach everything with love and, um, you know, with the intention of love and, and I think that's what helps. That's the knife I use. And and I do believe that it is like surgery. I love your analogy because mm -hmm. look, at, we can't bury things inside. So when we are having that hard conversation, it I think is an opportunity for two people to heal. It's an opportunity for past trauma, for wounds, inner, mm -hmm. you know, the the pain that's deep within all of us, I believe we're here for a reason. We're all learning, it's a journey. And those wounds, they surface, they start to surface when we have those hard conversations. So that's the beginning of healing. Those mm -hmm. wounds surface, those emotions come to the surface. And actually that's a, it's a beautiful process if it goes well, but yes, you don't wanna make the other person defensive. You wanna have good intentions. You wanna be, you wanna be coming from a calm place yourself. Right. So the more, I, I think, okay, so this, this just brings up something which I think is really important. When two people are having a difficult conversation, I think what can be profoundly helpful is, is so say there's two people, say somebody hurt you, right? And you have to have a conversation with them. I think it's profoundly helpful for you to address how you feel they made you feel to bring that emotion up instead of suppressing it, instead of like trying to go to that person to fix the problem, not to say that you instigated the problem, but if you feel something negative about that relationship, feel it, forgive it, feel it. Like for, that's a whole different level of healing. Mm -hmm. But if you can do that, if you can get to that point of being aware of the feeling, getting into a calm space in your mind, getting to that point of centering yourself and believing in, you know, like the truth that you are love, they are love, you know, inner child, inner child, sending them love, not to say that they don't need to improve. They don't need to do their part, but you do that. It can profoundly energetically shift the dynamics of the relationship mm -hmm. profoundly. Okay. Okay. So 
Now, also dealing with these two people looking at each other and, and having this yeah. conversation. So as a life coach, you teach people to look themselves in the mirror and face their truths. So uh, absolutely. Yes. Right. So the good, what, bad and the ugly. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you have to be completely honest if we're talking about trying to heal. So right. and was, there I, yeah. ever, what, was there ever a hard truth that you had to face? that allowed you to become not only the person that you are right now, but the life coach that you are? Like, what was your hardest truth that you had to face? So, such great questions. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, but this is a really good question, great question. So, what comes up for me when you say that is that I had the limiting mindset since I was a kid. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't feel okay. like I was capable of doing, you know, X, Y, and Z. I doubted myself. Now, a lot of people have this, but that certainly was true for me. And, oh boy, it took, it took a lot of inner healing, a lot of work, a lot of self, mm -hmm. you know, my personal development journey was like, over 25 years. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I'm almost 50 now. And I look back and I wish I knew what I know now when I was in my 20s. And, yeah. um, you know, that limiting mindset is what I worked hard to change. But, but it took a lot of meditation. It took a lot of, you know, the, the diligent work, practicing, um, you know, the, the things that I've learned in my life and putting them into action to see the transformation in my life. Now I do believe in myself and it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful way to live. You know, a lot of people, like I said, do not, they say they do, they, they, they act like, but they are not seeing the results they want in their life and their relationships and their health. And it's sad because it ultimately if they don't have that that belief in themselves, their their thoughts will follow. Then their thoughts will affect their daily choices. So it will affect the foundation of their health. You know whether they exercise, sleep good, whether they're eating well. All those things matter. You know they won't prioritize their self care needs if they have that limiting mindset, the limiting belief, the limiting talk. You know the limiting self talk. So many of us run on autopilot. They're, we're not even aware. You know, but we should be our best cheerleader. We should be the ones really focusing on our possibilities because we, we have that. But if we start to focus on what we don't have, cup is half empty, mm -hmm. that's the result that we'll see in our life. But, but the problem a lot of people face is changing their identity, changing their beliefs from what they learned in childhood. And that's when I work with my clients, that's what I dive deep with because that is a foundation. Otherwise, you're just putting a Band-Aid on things. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, it leads, if you don't address that, it leads to increased stress. You see it in our society. It leads to diseases. It does. It accumulates in our body and it leads to disease. And this is what I see with my patients, my physical therapy patients. I see two people of the same age, you know, they might be like 70 years old, both of them, but they both have, and they both have the same diagnosis, say, you know, post knee surgery, but they both present so differently. And it, mm. genetics are just a small portion of what contributes to your health it is your environment it is your your mindset your lifestyle you have control you this is a beautiful thing is that you have a choice in how you choose to think and that's powerful because that affects what you do your daily choices and that affects your lifestyle your health that affects your well-being prevents diseases you mm -hmm. have so much control right right and um I wish more people understood how much healing is. It, it begins in the mind. You know, I have yes. watched. Yes. I have watched people. I've had family members who have had cancer, and just watching the approaches and the way they have allowed, um, you know, the the cancer to affect them mentally and emotionally. Now, of course, it's a big deal to have cancer. So, if the person is very downtrodden about it that's understandable but on the flip side 
there there's so much healing in having such a positive disposition um i, I watched uh my, my little cousin he had osteosarcoma he was diagnosed at 17 and he lived a oh. lot longer with yeah, he lived a lot longer than they expected him to, but he his mindset was incredible. He said, wow. yeah, he said, I've never asked God why. I asked God why not. He said, I feel like I'm going through this for somebody else. You never heard him complain. Um, you never heard him upset about what he was going through. And we're talking about between the ages of 17 and 25, he got cancer like seven times, seven or eight times. Um, constantly having surgery, uh, chemo, radiation, mm. you know, the things that, that it did to his body, it only did to his body. It never did it to his mind. Wow. And, right. That's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Such a and, strong individual. Wow. Yes, absolutely. And, and unfortunately he did pass at 25, but, um, you know, osteosarcoma, there is no cure for osteosarcoma. So, um, it's just, it's one of those things where unfortunately it is a death sentence. So, um, but again, he just lived a lot longer than they thought he would because he was yet such a pleasant disposition, such a positive outlook on life. Um, yeah, that and, matters. Yeah. Your, your, your mindset is everything. And we take it, it for is. granted because we can choose our mindset at any point, but mm -hmm. mindset is everything. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You uh, you got to wake up every day and make the decision about how your day. Yep. Is going to be. You know, yep. um, I had a friend say to me one time, life is not about what happens to you it's about how you react to what happens to you. And, yes. um, and I've I've held on to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, it can be a okay. habit, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. You go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah. So. I was just going to say, people get into a habit of thinking limiting, of having that limiting mindset. Right. But that habit can be broken. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a process. And habits mm -hmm. take, on average, 66 days to change because of the neural pathways in our brain. So that's why right. it's so hard for people to try to change, you know, even these New Year's resolutions. Most people aren't able to follow right. through. So mm -hmm. it's it really comes down to habits when you're trying to make that mindset change it, it's and so bottom line is if somebody wants to transform their life they have to be ready to put in the work mm -hmm. they have to do yeah. things consistently until it becomes a habit i mean i help my clients with that but that's the bottom line if people want to see change they can't wait for it to come from outside it's got to come from within their choices their actions their mindset right. absolutely absolutely <laughs> Okay. So, all right, we're going to move on to the next part of the show. So this next part I call flip the script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these pictures that I showed you and I'm going to turn them upside down. And oh, then okay. I'm going to tell you, but then I'm going to tell you what I see. Oh. And based off, of, based off of what I see, you can ask me a question. You can choose whichever picture and which explanation that I've given for the picture. And you can just ask me whatever question that you want based off of what I said I see. Okay. Okay. So this first picture, this was the one you said, an angel. And this is that same picture upside down. And to me, it looks like some sort of hybrid of a fighter jet and a bug. Hmm. Fighter jet. Not, uh, bug. Yeah, I'm not really expecting you to see everything that I see with these because you know my mind. Yeah. My mind sometimes can go to some weird places with these things. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, I that, see both. I when you, you said okay. that, now I see it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So the next picture. This is the one where you say you saw the bug. And yes. This is that same picture upside down. Upside down to me, it looks like a hunchback person uh, playing the piano. It, we're seeing them hmm. from, from behind. You're looking at the yeah, person yeah, yeah. from behind. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they're they're playing the piano. And I guess they have two little, I guess that's antennas on their heads or whatever. I don't know, maybe little pig ears. I don't know what those two things are on the top <laughs> of their head. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, that, that's what I see. It looks like a hunchback person playing the piano right there 
Yeah, and, yeah, I see that. Uh, and the third picture, which is the one you say you saw two people looking at each other and having a conversation, and upside down, I see two bats. So there's a bat on one side, bat on the left, bat on the right, and mm. they are flying over top of two ducks. It looks like two ducks at the bottom, one on the left, oh, one on the I right. Oh, I see that. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> I see that. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. So we have this one with the bats and the ducks. We have this one, which is the fighter jet bug hybrid. And this one, the hunchback person playing the piano. So which one of these right. pictures do you want to choose to ask me a question? I think the one, let's see. I would say the fighter jet bug. Okay. Um, so any question? Yeah, any question, but based off of what I said, I see. Now, if you can't come up with a question based off of that, then you can go ahead and ask me whatever it is that you want to ask. Okay. Um, I I wonder, uh, you mentioned the bug and then the fighter jet, so I can ask you a question from that. Was there anything in your life experience so far that has made you um, particularly resilient or like a fighter? Um, and if so, what is it? Was it a person? Like what inspired you to be that way? Was it a person? Was it an experience? Or was it yourself, just self-motivated? Well, I, I don't believe that the thing, I've been through a lot of things and but I don't believe that these things necessarily made me a fighter. I think these things made me realize that I was already a fighter. Hmm. Cause so, I get that sense from you. I get, I feel that you are pretty strong. You have that inner strength. So I'm, yeah. I, you know, we all learn it different ways. So, okay. Okay. That inner strength has come from being in positions where I had no choice, but to have that strength. Um, now, I didn't always use it. Sometimes I felt really, really weak and I just let that weakness again. I had the limited mindset, the same thing that you spoke about. I had that limited mindset for a long time. And, yeah. uh, but what I needed to do was change the focus. The same thing that you teach people to do. I needed to change my focus and stop focusing focus. so much on the thing. Right. Yep. I needed to stop focusing on the thing that I felt was making me weak and instead focus on the strength that I already had that could help mm. me overcome these things that were making me weak. So, um, yeah, there, there were, there were, um, a lot of things. If you want to be specific, um, that, yeah, I'm just, just, just going through the, the list, my mental Rolodex of all the things that I've been through, I will say yeah. having to go into the, um, I spent some time in the psychiatric Institute of Washington. And I think that being there was one of the times that I felt at my, I was at my weakest, that I thought that I was at my weakest. Um, I didn't, I felt that I didn't feel protected. Um, I was paranoid. I was extremely depressed and I was extremely afraid. And it took an incredible amount of strength for me to make it through that. Um, I remember, you know, I oftentimes recall my very first night there and it was, it was very, very tough on me. My very, my, actually my first couple nights, but especially that first night, it was a very, very tough night for me. And, um, eventually I was able to tap into that strength. I had, you know, I realized that I needed to change my focus in order for me to mm -hmm. begin healing so that I could get out of there, <laughs> you know. Wow. So, so yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I so, think, that's I think that, really that was, that was interesting. Really Thank you for sharing that because I know mm -hmm. um, it sounds like it was a really profound moment for you in your life or experience because I feel that because you had that experience, it forced you to dig deep mm -hmm. and to make yep. that shift and, and thank goodness mm -hmm. you did. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, That's great. absolutely. It definitely did. But, um, you know, I'm able to, as I look back over my life, I'm able to start connecting dots. You know, when you're going through something, at the moment that you're going through it, all you know is that you're in the midst of a storm. It doesn't make sense. Why am I in this mm. storm? Why do I have to deal with these things? But after you get right. out of that storm and you're able to look back over your life and then you start connecting dots, things start to make sense. And then you- Right, yeah. Yeah, you understand that, you understand not only the reason for why you went through it, but you also understand that you had the strength to get through it the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. I really do believe that we're we're all here for a reason to learn and to grow. Like this is our everyone has a different journey, but this is this is life and it, we're all here to learn something and grow. Right. Mm -hmm. And help yeah. each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Well, well Sam Ring, we are going to start to wrap up now. Um, but before we before we get out of here, I want you to to just you know let everybody know how they can get in contact with you. Actually, let them know any and everything that you have going on that you want to just promote. You want to put out there, and then let them know how they can get in contact with you. Okay. Um, well, you know, I I do offer life coaching services. I am a success coach. Uh, it's very similar. I just have my background in uh, Jack Canfield success principles training. So, uh, but basically I'm a life coach and I have a 30 day reset program. So the 30 day reset program helps person really stay consistent and make some significant shifts in their mindset and their lifestyle. Uh, so I, I help keep them accountable week by week. I give people the tools that they need to dive deep and really transform their mindset, their limiting beliefs, their limiting self-talk, and to start seeing results in their life. So if, you know, it, it helps with their health. It helps with their relationships, creating more joy, less stress. Um, and I do offer a, a free initial session just to see if the person wants to get to know if they are... Um, the right fit for this program. I also, because I, I have my fitness background, I also offer um, a personal training sessions on Zoom. So the personal training is that you have a choice. You can do just the personal training because fitness matters. Your, mm -hmm. your exercise habits are one of the most important ways, one of the most um, effective ways to create a positive mindset. You exercise every day, it's the best way, one of the best ways to prioritize your self-care. So I do offer the personal training Zoom sessions and I also offer personal training wellness uh, plus the life coaching. So you can get personal training along with life coaching. That's totally up to you, you don't have to do both. Again, my first session is free um, to so you can get to know a little bit more about my programs and to see if you're a good fit. And my website, the best way to reach me is it's uh, coachingbysamreen.com. And Samreen is spelled S-A-M-R-E-E-N. So, so yeah, I, I can definitely help if someone out there would like to really start seeing lasting change because I... I bring with me the knowledge I have about, you know, habit change down to the deep neural pathways, um, really what makes those habits last. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a way and, you know, people can try it on their own. Most are not successful because they don't have the accountability and the tools, but if they, this will help because it, they can do the hard work now so that they benefit and not suffer later. Because like I said, if you don't address those limiting mindset and beliefs, you'll continue to put a Band-Aid on things and it does affect health. It does lead to mm -hmm. chronic illnesses and affects your your overall well-being. Right, okay. And um, also, if, if anybody missed the website, I will put it in the description of the, um, of the, um, the, the, the YouTube link. Um, right. I think I should be able to do it everywhere else because this will air on Facebook and Instagram as well. So, um, oh, so I should okay, be able nice. to, 
Right. Yes. Yeah, so I should be able to put the links in, you know, on, on those platforms as well. So, but yeah, so if, if you missed the website, don't worry about it. I got you all covered. It'll be there. It'll be in the description. So, okay. So, but Sam Rain, I want to thank you so much for your time. I want to thank you for what you're doing for people. Um, you're, you're changing lives. You're enriching lives. You are adding value to people. Um, and, you know, people like you are, you're a hero. You really are a hero. Um, Thank and you. Uh, we need more people like you. I appreciate you and everything that you're doing. Um, I'm really grateful that you said that. Thank you. And um, yeah, I just want to be able to shine the light for people so they can um, live in great joy. You know, it's not a dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. This is our one life. So got to make the right. most of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. No. Okay, so before we get out of here, I have one more picture I'm going to put up here. I want you to tell oh. me exactly what you see. <laughs> it's well it says this podcast is so dope <laughs> and i couldn't it, agree more <laughs> it is. thank you i love you. yeah <laughs> thank you it's thank so you again dope. so much <laughs> well it must be it made you repeat it so <laughs> yeah <laughs> well but yes yeah, thank you again sam Rain. i really appreciate it and for everybody yeah. else out there, y'all be good to each other. Yes.